In this video, we will go over how to implement certain security policies. This first slide shows us the local password policy. So in order to access local security policy, we're going to hit the Windows key, type in local security policy, and it should open up a window that looks like this. Inside of here, we have a ton of set settings that we can configure with regard to a security settings. In this case, we're going to click this drop down, uh, click password policy, and this will give us a lot of settings that we can control with regard to password policy. So we could force the user to use complex characters. We can re require a password length of greater than a certain number of characters. In this case, we have nine defined. We can have a maximum password age at when the user will have to then change their password to a new password. We can enforce password history. This means that a user cannot use passwords in the last five or whatever number we specified passwords that have been previously used. Another type of policy here is the account lockout policy. This one, we can specify how many invalid login attempts that a user can have. If they've had over that many login attempts, we can specify how long they will be locked out. So if, in this case, if someone mistypes their password three times, they will be locked out of their machine for 30 minutes. And then the lockout counter will reset after 30 minutes so that they will then have access to be able to try again. Another policy here is rather than under account policies is local policies. This one is the audit policy. The audit policy allows us to configure what is actually tracked and uh, monitored on our device based on certain things that are happening. So for example, an audit policy change, we have a success or failure. So what's gonna happen if someone comes and changes the account policy, like we what we just discussed, or even an audit policy, it will configure, it will log this. If it fails to change this policy, it will still log it so that we can track these events. We can track login attempts. We can track account management. We can track when someone fails to log in, etc. So there's plenty of options here. And this is just a tip of the iceberg of all the different policies that we could explore. Feel free to look at all these policies here and see if there's anything of interest that you think could be configured. So we talked previously about baselines. So this is one thing that a security administrator is going to go through is define all the baselines of what privileges we want to create, what policies we want to have in place to be able to protect our hosts against multiple login attempts or whatever it is that uh, could potentially lead to a breach. So with the audit policy, after some events have taken place, we can go to the event viewer. So hit the Windows key or click the bottom left corner, type in event viewer. This would open up this event viewer. We can then go to the Windows log folder, specifically the security section. And then this will show us all the different tra logs that have occurred. So these were regarding the audit policy when a login occurred. So the first one was a failed login, failed login, and then a successful login attempt into the organization. As you can see, it's failed because lock, lock, and then finally they were allowed access because they provided the correct password. So what I want you to do is go ahead and manipulate some of these local security policies, then come back here and compare your answers. Okay, so I here I've opened up the local security policy. The first rule that we're going to do is enforce the complexity requirements with a minimum password length of eight characters. So I'll go ahead and click on the password policy. We're gonna change this to the minimum password length of eight characters. Click OK. And then we're gonna enable the password complexity requirements. And then what we're gonna do is try to create a user that violates this. So we're gonna add a new user. I don't have the person sign in information. Add a user without a Microsoft account, and then we'll go ahead and create a testing user with the password of test, test, security question, test, test, and test, next. And then you can see here this red text indicating that we can't create a password because it violated the complexity requirements. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is set the account lockout policy for one minute after three failed attempts. So we're back at the local security policy. We're going to go to account lockout policy. We're going to say that a user can have three invalid attempts. And then we'll set the lockout duration for one minute. By default, it will change this to 30 minutes. So we'll change this to one minute. So what I would do is I would log out of my account, fail to log in three times, and then it would lock me up for one minute. All right, the next thing is to check the success and failure for both the audit account login events and the audit logon events policy. 
So here I am at the event viewer. What I'm going to do is click on Windows Log Security and we can see that th some events have been logged. So for example, the user account management, what I just changed, other system events. Now I will say, don't forget to undo these policies if you don't want to have them in place. Otherwise, you'll be restricted to the settings that you gave in the account policies.